Okay, so let's get started on today. Um, we are going to start off with a review of this for loop. Um, actually, before we get into that, let's practice using some for loops. So everybody go ahead and open your Python idle and open your Python shell. I'll give everyone a couple of minutes to do that. Great, so if you're just joining us, we're opening Python shell and we're gonna practice some for loops. All right. And just to give you guys a heads up today, since today is interactive, I will be calling on people. I will be unmuting you um, and asking you some questions, but don't worry about it. If you don't know the answer, it's really, um, I don't want you to stress about it. Um, maybe someone, someone else in your class can help you out. Um, but I will give people the opportunity to raise their hands first. So if you do want <laughs> to answer her question, if you do know the answer to a question and you raise your hand for that answer, you'll be less likely to be called on later on for a question that you might not know the answer to, right? All right. So we're gonna do a review of for loops. I'm just waiting because I still see people arriving here. But they can jump in with us. We're in the Python shell. If you remember, we start with this the word for, and then we have our temporary var variable. And a lot of times we use I, but you can really use anything. So here I'm gonna use fruit because I'm gonna have a list of fruit. Then we have the operator in, and here in the for loop, we can use different things. We can use range, and who can raise their hand and tell me what um, this range creates, what list this creates. I will, I will tell you that it's a list of integers. Great. What do you think, Sebastian? It's a list of um, integers uh, in between 0 and 10. Does it include 10? No. Exactly correct, Sebastian. Excellent. I see some other hands popped up there. And guys, great. Thank you so much. I appreciate you raising your hand. So yeah, so Sebastian is correct. This is going to create a list of integers from 0 up and 2, but not including 10. And fruit is going to take on that value for every iteration. But as you can imagine, we're not going to use range in this this um, for loop right here. Another option for a for loop is you can have a string and this temporary variable fruit will take on a letter in the string. I mean, or you could have integers in your string, but um, you know, a value in the string for every iteration. What we're gonna do for this for loop, and you guys can be typing along here, is we're gonna have a list. And so we have this list of values. And who can raise their hand and tell me what is the last thing I need to add to this for loop line? Before I can press enter. What do you think, Nico? The uh, semicolon. Ah, very close. Um, <laughs> I think you just colon, mixed up your punctuation. Colon. It's a full colon, but full colon. correct, awesome. Yeah. So this is something that you guys might have noticed I a lot of times forget about, but it's okay because Python lets me know. And you can know that your for loop is working um, when you press enter after you have your for, your temporary var variable, your in, and then your range object or your list or string, and your colon. Um, when you press enter in the Python shell or in a new program window, this indentation will move over for you. Right, and so what we've been seeing a lot in 
um, with uh, for loops is we will print um, that the items of a list or the items of a range. And if I'm going to print apples, then bananas, then grapes, who can raise their hand and tell me what I should put in between these parentheses? All right, I see a couple of hands. Okay. What do you think, Colette? Hey, Colette, are you there? Ooh, I cannot hear you. Um, sorry about that. Oh, there you are. Maybe. Sorry, Colette, I can't hear you. I'm going to call on someone else. Does anyone else know the answer? You can write in if you want. You can try writing in. Okay. What do you think, Reese? Reese? Oh, uh, you would write print fruit. Exactly correct. Exactly correct. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, so you would print fruit right there. And so fruit is going to take on apples, and then the next time it will take on bananas, and the next time grapes. Right? And so we have apples, bananas, grapes. And that's our basic for loop. And we've seen this a few times. I'm going to put some hands down. Um, but as you guys know, for loops can be used for lots of different things other than just the print function. Right? So let's say we have four. And then we have our variable, our temporary variable i in range. Let's just say 10, with our colon. What if we create a variable? Oop. Actually, before we type this, I'm going to go ahead and create a variable. Um, let's say the variable spam, and I'm going to set it equal to zero. All right, and I'll explain why in a second. So I have my variable assignment, and I'm going to say 4i in range 10. I'm going to take the variable spam and add to it i. And then, just so we can see what's happening, let's print spam. All right. So I want, this one's a little bit trickier. Oh, yeah, Dorian, thanks for, for messaging in that last answer. Um, oh, Colette, I see your mic wasn't plugged in. Sorry about that, but I'll definitely call on you later in class. All right, excellent. So if your mic isn't working, you can type in the questions. Okay. <clears throat> so can, I want everybody to take a minute and think about, um, hopefully you guys are keeping up with the typing. I know I tend to type a little quickly, um, try to work on that, but think about what this is gonna do. Let's go through it each time. So spam starts out as zero, and then we have our for loop, and i is gonna take on the values from zero to nine. So we're gonna start with zero. Let's consider just the, the zero iteration. Spam, this variable, we're going to reset the value of spam. So initially, spam is 0 here, and we're going to add to it i. Well, initially, then you're just adding 0. So it's 0 plus 0, and that's the new spam. And you see this a lot of times in code, and it can be kind of disorienting when you see it, because you you see the same variable on both sides of the equal sign. This is just it's a way to update your code. A lot of times, if you have a list um, and you want to add an item to the list, you'll see this kind of code. And we're going to see that in a second. So for the zero, it will read um, for the zeroth iteration, spam plus zero, and that's zero plus zero. And when we print spam, that should be zero. The next time through, I will be one. What was spam previously? Zero plus one. Now spam is one. So one will be printed. All right, go through the next time. Spam is one plus i is two. So now spam is three. 
All right, and that continues, and we're going to get updates each time it goes through the for loop. And it's going to go through the for loop 10 times. So let's see what happens there. All right, so this is a little bit more complicated. Just adding this, you know, this little extra line shows that you can have more to your for loop than simply printing out the list that you present it with. So if you look at these integers, what's happening is um, when for i being uh, when i is 3, right, spam before that was 3. And you can see that there. That was the step before. So 3 plus 3 is 6, and that's what we get. So now spam is 6, and we know our i is 4. Because we're going through the iteration, i is going to take on the values one at a time. Maybe to make that a little bit more clear. And by the way, guys, did you? I don't know if you just saw what I did, but I will redo it. If I put my cursor, um, once I've already executed a code in shell and I put my cursor and click right below, um, beside the end line of that code, I can press enter and it will copy itself for me. Right, so I just put my cursor right after spam and press enter and it recopied so I didn't have to retype it. It's a pretty neat trick. Right, so maybe to make this more clear, let's also have it print I. So we're going to have it print I and print spam. Oops. <laughs> All right, so I should have reset spam to zero because now it started with spam as 45. And we can see that right there. When I was zero, spam was 45 because it was taking it from up here from this last for loop. And then was, uh, when I was 1, it added the 1 to the 45 and became the 46. Um, and so it's just taking on the different values and updating. <laughs> Someone said that will be very helpful. Yes, I actually just recently found out that you can copy it like that. It's very nice. <laughs> All right, so let's let's take a let's make a list. <laughs> And when we make a list, you know that we have brackets, and then we can fill these brackets with items. A lot of times we like to fill it with integers or strings. But if you leave the list, well, we're going to actually make it a string. Um, if you leave a list or string with nothing in it, it's called an empty list or an empty string. And so there's not even a space in between those, right? That's just an empty string. And we can use a for loop and one of these lines that's similar to what I would call an update line for the variable fruit to fill that string. So for i in um, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Oop, I forgot my uh, colon there. Fruit is now going to be fruit plus I. And then I'm going to print fruit. Right, so all it's doing is it's, this is might be a more clear example. It's just updating every time you go through the for, uh, the for loop 
it's adding one to fruit, adding one of these values to fruit as it goes along. Kind of updating it while the steps go along. All right, and so this is a very elementary um, way, but just a way to explain how for loops are used a lot. Um, you'll see a lot of times this variable equals the variable plus i, or some variation of that. Updating it and using it, um, looping it through a range of values. All right. So now let's consider some challenges. And we're actually going to come back to this, this loop in a little bit, since it's more complicated than some of the challenges that we're going to be doing today. And here is the first challenge. And so what I mean by challenge is I want you guys to actually go into your idle and open a new window. And when I give you the challenge, I want you to take some time, um, think about how you're going to use a for loop to do the challenge I presented, and then just try it out. Um, let's say I wanted you to use a for loop to list all the integers from 0 to 9. Well, I would think, OK, I know I'm going to have to start with a for, an in, and a colon. Off the bat, I know those are there. So I can start there. Um, I want my variable to be, let's say, integer instead of i. So you can really use anything. And then I get to the part with range. And I don't remember if my range value, I don't know what I should put as the input. I know I'm going to use range, but I don't remember if I should put 9 or 10. I know we already did this example today, but I'm, I'm helping you guys for when I give you the challenges. You can go to your Python shell. Remember, that's your program window. You can go to your Python shell and test it out. Oh, well, what's range 10? Oops. We're going to use our list function so that we can view the range. Oh, well, that goes to 0 to 9. So that's right. That's what I'm going to use, range 10. And then we remember we have our print function. All right. And so now we remember if I just press enter, nothing's going to happen. What I have to do is save it and run it using the run module. It will ask to save. I'm not going to save this one, but I want you guys to do that. You can save it as challenge one and then today's date where you can save it um, how you like it. All right. So our first challenge is I want you guys to use a for loop to print a menu for dinner. And if that's not clear, I'm going to go ahead and run the code that I wrote to solve this challenge. All right. So after running it, this is what the user sees. Today we are having salad, meatloaf, potatoes, ice cream. So I will let you know I wrote this print line and then I wrote my for loop, OK? So this isn't actually part of the for loop. I just wanted to present the material. And then I had a list that the for loop ran through. All right, so it is 6.50 now. And I'm going to give you guys until 6.55 to work on this. If you finish your code before 6.55, um, go ahead and send me a message. And I'm going <laughs> to. Yeah. I'll ask you another challenge to make it a little bit harder if you finish it. If you can't figure it out and you get really frustrated, go ahead and send me a message and I will give you a hint. But don't worry about it. Um, in a lot of our classes, especially this first one, it's really difficult to bridge that gap between reading my code, reading the codes I've been putting out here and understanding them, and writing them from scratch. A lot of times it can be daunting to open a new program window and know what to say. But don't worry about it. <laughs> no one's going to see your computer right now. So it's OK. Just um, try to remember as best you can and try stuff out. You're not going to mess anything up, that's for sure.
Hey, Sebastian, do you have a question? Yes, I tried to run it, and it said it repeated itself over and over. Okay, so if you wrote a list, and instead of using your temporary variable, but you use the variable you saved the list to, that can happen. Why don't you oh, see okay. if you did that? <laughs> I only know because I've done it myself, so <laughs> I've definitely been there. All right, thanks. All right, no problem. All right, guys, it is 6.55. I know a lot of you guys are probably still working. Um, I am not trying to hold you guys up. Let's see if we have any questions before I show my code. Hey, Nico, what's your question? I just um, raised my hand to say I have it working. Oh, great. I'm glad. That's awesome. All right. I actually um, would like a, just a, a show of hands, um, now that I put your hands down, Nico, but just... Raise your hand and keep it raised if you did get your code working. And again, if you didn't, do not worry about it. We're going to go over mine now. Okay, great. Excellent. I know you guys only had five minutes, and it's the first code you've designed. So it's really throwing you in the deep end. But let's take a look at it. I'm going to give you guys more time for the next one. All right, so here's the, the code that I used. First, I have a comment line so that I know later that this loop is gonna present a menu. Then I have a variable in which I store a list. My list is salad, meatloaf, potatoes, ice cream. Uh, and the reason that I'm setting it, assigning it up here, Instead of using it, um, just putting the list here, putting the bracket part of the list here is so that I could change, if I wanted to change the menu, it's easier to do at the top of your program code. I know this code is really short, but if the program was longer, it's a good habit to get into. All right, and then I have my print line. Today we are having, and then my for loop goes, through every item in the list menu, starting with salad, and then it prints that item. All right. Do we have any questions on this code? Oh, okay. Um, and so I'm going to give you guys, <laughs> April has a great point. Who needs ice cream when you've got salad? Uh, <laughs> that's all I, I, I want to start my dinner. But uh, take a moment and make, sh make sure that you understand all of the parts of this code. Um, we're going we're gonna to do another example that's similar to this one. All right, and then I'm going to give you guys more time with that one after I show you my code. So right now, if you didn't get this quite um, quite right, that's okay. I hope you guys are taking the time to look at it and make sure you, you got everything. You think you understand how this code works? Raise your hand when you're ready to move to the next challenge. You think, okay, I think I understand this for loop. I think I want to take a look at the next one. Great, so that's about half the class. Give everyone another minute. I'm gonna keep your hands up and I'm just gonna go through the code one more time. So this first line is not gonna be presented to 
the user, right? All it's doing is saving the menu as a list to this variable menu. Then we have a print line. This is going to be shown to the user today we are having. And then we have a for loop that for every item, an item is the temporary variable. We could also call this i, right? It's just a variable in menu, which is referring to this list. It prints i. So the, the zeroth time through, i takes on the value salad. It takes on menu brackets i, <laughs> which is salad. And so salad is printed. And the next time meatloaf is printed and then potatoes, and then ice cream. Yes, Austin, um, yeah, the for loops go through each item in the list and prints it. But the reason that this is printing it is because we have the print function. I think some people were getting confused. You do not have to use the print function in a for loop. What a for loop does is takes you one by one through an item in, through items in a range, through values in a range. And then the code underneath it is executed for the variable that is taken on that value. In this case, it does go through the whole list and print each one at a time. But sometimes you're gonna be doing addition or not printing the value. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do, but it's not, you're not necessarily going to print each time. All right, so I'm going to put your hands down. Um, this is, will be available on Edmodo, and this um, session is being recorded, so if you want to come back to this, guys, you definitely can. But let's take a look at the next challenge. All right. I will save this, sure. Okay, the next challenge is similar. I want you to use a loop to go through the two times table. And by that, I mean two times one, two times two, all the way up to two times 12. So let me show you what I mean here. I'm gonna pause my screen for one moment. Okay. Uh, show my screen. All right. So I want you to run this code. And when it runs, it prints, let's go through the two times table. Yours doesn't need to print this. This is just an example of my code, right? So all your code has to do is run through the values of the two times table. I don't want you guys to think that your menu had to say meatloaf either, right? Just to present a menu. Um, so this is two times one, and this is two times two, and this is two times three, and this is two times four, right? All the way to 12. So as you can imagine, you're going to create a for loop, and your temporary variable is going to take on the values um, from one to 12. So think about what you have to make your range for that. And if you remember, when we did Python as a calculator, in order to get Python to respond with an integer value, all you have to do is use this multiplication. So 2 times 2, and that's going to resolve to 4. All right, so I want you guys to work on that. And start a new window. Open a new window. Do not use your same window for the first challenge. Maybe save this one as challenge two. I'm going to pause my screen for one more moment. All right. So this time I ran the code. Um, and this is going to be an extra challenge. Once you can get your for loop to run through and do two times two, two times three, two times four, Right, and it's just going to be one for loop that does that. It's just going to go through the different iterations, two times one, and then two times two, and then two times three. Once you get that part, I want you to try to work on this code, which is a little more complicated. It shows the user. Um, it shows the user what the problem is 
and then it gets the answer. All right, so it's 7.04 now. And I'm going to give you guys until 7.10. Then I'm going to show you guys my code, and then you guys can continue working um, until 7.15 or so. All right, so this time you're going to have more time. Um, I want you guys to get started. Try first. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll be checking in with you. So as a heads up, I will be calling on you guys at 7.10 just to make sure everyone's doing okay. And I want anyone frustrated um, if they're not getting it. It takes, it takes a lot of practice. It's just like learning a new language um, where reading it is, is, there's a difference between reading it and being able to write it and respond in it. And with Spanish or French or any language that you're learning in school, you know that um, you are much it's much easier to be reading it than have to come up with your own responses. So we're just practicing that today. So again, send me a message if you get it to work, if you get both of these to work. So first this one, and then you alter that same code to show the question. Let me know, send me a little question. And if you can't get it to work and you're getting really frustrated and want a hint, just hold out for the next five minutes or send me a question. Give me a heads up.
All right, guys, it's 7.10. Ooh, I have a question. Hey, what's your question? Do you have a question, Dorian? Um, yeah, when I programmed this, mm -hmm. it went, instead of stopping at 24, it went all the way up to 48. Oh, okay. Well, I think, um, you're... I think your range just went to 20. Too high? Yeah. So um, I, you might have just seen that 24, and instead mm -hmm. of going to to uh, 13, you might have gone to check oh, where your range went. I see. <laughs> that right. explains a lot. All right. Excellent. Easy fix there. All right, so now I'm going to show you guys my code. If you haven't gotten it working, I know I only gave you five minutes. Don't worry about it. I'm going to give you some more time after this. But just for those of you who stuck, need a hint, or need to look at my code for a little bit. Right. So initially, I'm going to take this code out for a minute. Initially, to get this right here, to just get the answers, we have print, let's go through the two times table. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. And then a for loop for i, our temporary variable, in the range from 1 to 13, starting at 1, going up to, and not including 13. So that's going to be a list um, of the integers 1 to 12, including 12. I want to print, and here we don't actually need to convert this to a string. Um, but I, I did for the next step. It can't hurt. <laughs> um, here we have, uh, two times I. And so that's just going to take every integer as from one to 12 and multiply it by two. And the solution is going to be right there. Right. And with um, to get to this, I had this line um, where I would print strings of um, two times, and my string ended, and then I took the string version of um, my i, so that's going to take on the values. So for the first one, I have two times one, because we're starting with one, and then equals. And then the solution is right there. And the way that I got the solution to be right there and not one line down is because I told my print function, instead of jumping down a line, which would have happened if I would have just ended the parentheses right there, let's make the end be a space. And we've done that in class before. So hopefully you guys have seen that. So I want you guys to work on that. Um, I'm, it's 7.13 now. I'm going to give you guys um, till, I'm going to say 7.20. If you figured it out, um, if you got your for loop to work so that it presents both this times table and then this one as well, go ahead and send me a message and I have another challenge for you. I'm just going to, um, hey, Andrew, do you have a question? Um, sorry, no, I, I, um, was raising my hand because I said I was, um, to say I was, um, done with the two. Oh, great. Okay. Um, actually, I'm just going to let everyone know about the challenge. If you need a reminder, I will let you know, but if you have it working so that it goes through the numbers, um, and then it also presents the string um, of the problem and then shows the solution. Then think about adding a line of code so that your user can guess the answer before the answer is shown. It doesn't necessarily have to be shown on the same line. This time it can jump down lines where you have the question and then the user's response and then the correct answer. Note, I'm not saying that the computer or your code has to check if the user's answer is correct.
because that's a more difficult code. But just let the user guess. And we don't have to check. All right, so I'm going to actually type that up here with my comments. You guys got about five minutes left, and then we're going to check back in. Oops. All right, about one minute left. Uh, 
All right, so now it's 720. Uh, I want just a quick raise of hands and listen to the question before you raise your hand. If you got um, this part to work, so even if you got further, that's okay. But if you got this first part to work, um, where it just shows, oh, sorry, this is the first part, where it shows the answers, the solutions, raise your hand. So even if you got further than that, if you got at least this, raise your hand. Okay, great, and keep it raised. All right, and then, all right, I'm gonna put everyone's hands down. That's great, guys. If you got this second part working, go ahead and raise your hand. All right, yeah, I didn't give you guys a lot of time. I know if you had had more time, I'm sure more of you guys would have got this working. All right, I'm going to put your hands down. And as for the optional challenge, if you guys got a chance to do it, this is the code I got, just so that you guys know. And if other people wanted to think about it, I just had them, I just added this quick line with the input function. And um, then had it print, the, well, the correct answer is string two times I, which we had before. And if you run that, um, you can go through the times tables. And Python doesn't actually care. You don't even have to type anything. It's just waiting for the input. And then it will go on its way. All right. So how are we doing? I hope people are feeling okay about this. Please send me, Ooh. I have a question here, let me read it. The error is cannot assign to function call. Um, all right, so, Nico, just really quickly, so Nico had a question of when he was setting his input, and he tried to set the input function um, equal to guess with two parentheses, and Python is not going to want to do that. Let me type it out. Because um, this, Python wants you to put your variable first, so your guess would have to be first. And since guess is a variable, we don't give it parentheses. We only give parentheses to functions. So you're only going to put the input after your variable and only give parentheses to functions. All right, so hopefully that'll get, that will help with your error message. Okay, guys. No problem. All right, so if we don't have any questions, this has been a very responsive class today, guys. I really appreciate that. I think it was my threat of calling on you too. Um, so before we leave, I did wanna go through this for loop one more time. I know we did it on Monday, but it's important um, to understand what we can use. Oop. For loop four. So if you remember, we started um, this for loop. Let me pull up that code. We have our blanks equal to five underscores, or if we're using the word otter, it's five underscores. It depends on the length of the secret word. And then we have a for loop. Our range looks a little bit funky, but it's, it's just the same um, it's going to be, the range is going to be um, 
the indices of our secret word. So if our secret word has five letters, it's going to go from zero up to but not including five because our indices go zero, one, two, three, four. And then our for loop takes on those values as it goes through. Secret word I, that just refers to the letter in the secret word that we're dealing with for that index in correct letters. And then if this if statement is true, if that letter has already been guessed, blanks get spliced open and we fill in that underscore, we replace that underscore with that letter. All right, so let's take a look at that code real fast. We only have five minutes. So first we look at, we're using index zero. Blanks, um, we just defined it as five underscores and the player has played through and has two correctly guessed letters so far, TR. So we're setting up the game board for him. We're updating the game board for him or her. Secret word zero is O. That is not in TR, so that if statement is not true. So we move to the next iteration and blanks does not change value. When we're using e index one, secret word one is T. T is in TR, so we're gonna splice. We're gonna take blanks up until but not including one which is that underscore, add to it secret word one, which is the T, and then add to it those last three underscores or blanks from two until the end. So all this is saying is you're taking the string of an underscore plus T plus three underscores. You're changing the variable blanks, right? Just like the updates that we were talking about today. You're updating the variable. So this is what blanks is now. The next time you go through the for loop, Blanks has this new value, and we can see that here. Now we're on index two. Secret word two is also T, that is in TR. So we're gonna splice again. Everything before two, everything after two. Those remain the same. What's changing is that second index and the, the underscore is being replaced by the corresponding letter, which is T. All right. Then we go to secret word three. That's an E, that's not in TR. That if statement is false, so we move to the next iteration. And we have R. Secret word four is R. And I know that can be tricky because it makes it sound like the fourth secret word, but I'm talking about the secret word. Um, and then that, that fourth letter, or the, the fifth letter, but with the index four in that string otter. That is in TR, so we're going to splice. Everything before that fourth index is going to remain the same, and everything after is the last index, so there's nothing after. But that one inde index that we're talking about, that underscore, is going to be replaced with the index from secret word, which is that R, and it gets filled in. So by the time that we are done with the for loop, the letters that the user has guessed get filled in. All right, any questions there? I know we don't, we only have two minutes. Um, I would ask more questions about that, but I hope you guys understand, um, or this is just a great example with in this hangman code of how for loops um, can be used. Instead of having to go through and writing out these if then statements, um, as you can see here, we would have had to write just for otter, we would have had five. We can use a for loop to go through that information in just a few lines of code and really condense it. And so that's, it's all about efficiency with programming. And we are going to take a break from Python next week and work on some CAD um, software. Uh, get ready for 3D printing. Um, and I just wanted to invite you guys again to that our open mic, which is going to be in an hour and a half tonight. It is not mandatory, but we'd love to see you there. If you have any questions about for loops, please come. Um, I We can be going over those challenges as well. I will be posting a challenge. I know you guys didn't really get a chance to see it, and it's almost 7.30, but I will be posting a challenge um, with adding a for loop to that time software, which should be on Edmodo now. Um, but it is 7.30 now. 
So you guys are, uh, please feel free to leave. I'm going to pull up that file for anyone who wants to see the challenge. So I'll see you guys on Monday or a little bit later tonight. Um, if those of you that have to jump off. All right, this is the code I was talking about. And I'm going to have you guys add a word list to it. And I will post that challenge tonight. All right, bye, everybody. Have a nice night.